love is weird enough when two average people are involved, but when someone like Young Jun falls in love, he does it big. He's changing in ways that the whole company notices, and all for the better, though they don't quite know what to do with a vice president who suddenly makes his own copies. But he doesn't know when to stop, which could cause a problem that can't be resolved with a simple apology. Episode 9 Recap After Sung Yoon's Public Confession, Misa says she wants to clear up any misunderstandings, and she confesses to Young Jun that she likes him. He hugs her, but when he tries to kiss her, he has another bad flashback. Misa reaches up and gently kisses him, and when she pulls away, he goes right back in for another kiss, his fear's gone. They go for a walk, and Yang Jun says he wants to make things clear, we stopped being a sum, and became a couple, right? Oh, you are so cute, yet still so arrogant. He teases Misa for her formal response, making her sail off, head held high. Young Jun calls after her, let's go together. My woman, and poor Misa looks like she'd happily crawl into the nearest hole. Young Jun enjoys her reaction so much, he yells my woman, several more times just to see her blush. He drops me so off at her door, then just stands there, reluctant to leave. He reminds her that he's smart, healthy, rich, and competent, in case she forgot in the last five minutes, and he asks her again to marry him. Miso points out that they've been together less than an hour, worried that he's rushing things, and he mutters under his breath, who rushed it more? Young Juna smiles all the way home, remembering the little girl Miso that he met so long ago. She'd insisted that he marry her after saving her from the house where they were locked up, and even made him pinky swear. He makes a U-turn and goes right back to Mia So's apartment, saying that it's in case she misses him all night long. He jokes that he never gives second chances but he wants to give her a second and even third chance to see him. He asks cheekily if she feels honored to be special to him, and he wishes her sweet dreams, which she knows means to dream of him. Young Jun asks for one more hug, and says softly that he'll be having sweet dreams tonight, too. Miso finally shoes him home, reminding him that he has a big meeting in the morning. She plays it cool, but when she gets inside, she immediately runs to the window to watch him driving away. Young Jun makes it home and catches his reflection in the mirror, and he futilely tells his mouth to stop curling up like that. Or, he even smiles in his sleep, the so sweet, my teeth ache. Misa dreams of Opa, and making him promise to marry her. She wakes, thinking that Opa was supposedly Sung Yun, but feeling confused. In the morning, Yushik carefully backs out of Young Jun's office worried that his friend is acting strange lately. He tells Miso that Young Jun has been nodding off all day, and she says he even overslept this morning. Yushik offers to show Miso something fun, and they creep into Young Jun's office where he's fast asleep on the couch. Young Jun answers groggily when Yushik whispers to him, and Yushik and Miso giggle that his mind never shuts off even when he's sleeping. Yushik asks if something happened to create a cognitive shift, but he gets a call from Mari Yuan before Miso can answer. Miso covers Young Jun with a blanket and sits to look at his sleeping face. She remembers that he had a nightmare the last time she did this, but she thinks that he looks more relaxed this time. She starts to leave, but he grabs her wrist and pulls her into his arms, unconcerned that someone might come in and see them. Miso is flustered, but Young Jun tells her to expect this much when she awakens someone's slumbering desires. Well, raw. That flusters her even more, and he tells her to get used to it because he won't slow down. Double raw. She asks if he's feeling well, since he's sleeping so much today. He says a huge weight was lifted from his shoulders yesterday, and he doesn't think he'll have nightmares anymore, either. He tells her that he's not ill anymore, and she notices that, anymore, and asks if Sung Yoon is really her Opa. Young Jun says that she's asking an obvious question, so Miso explains that she keeps feeling like he's really Opa because of his scars and traumatized behaviors. Young Jun tells Miso that it would be great if someone she likes is the Opa she's been looking for, but he says he's not a him, and that his scars and nightmares have nothing to do with that. He asks if it changes her feelings about a him, and Miso shakes her head no. She says she likes him no matter what, and leaves him to finish his nap. Back at her desk, Miso overhears GR on the phone with her movers, who are moving her things into her new apartment today. GR says that she'll focus more on work now that she lives closer, and Miso reminds her that she's late for a meeting. Ha, oops. Miso declines a call from Sung Yun, who's waiting to talk to his agent, cameo by Young Soo Young. 
She's thrilled at the response after his book concert, but Sung Yun isn't interested in the interviews he's offered. His agent says sadly that she loved when he confessed to his first love, but Sung Yun just looks downcast. At lunchtime, a young Jun wants to take Misa to eat, noting that it will be the first meal they've had together since they started dating. Miso behaves like a good secretary, offering to make a list of nice restaurants that serve his favorite dessert, but they both feel like this isn't how couples should interact. They still feel awkward over lunch when they realize that it was Young Jun's idea to celebrate their new relationship, but Misa did all the work. She even waits on him so attentively that the waiter remarks that she seems more like Young Jun's secretary than his date. Womp womp. After lunch, Young Jun suggests they go to a movie. Misa says very stiffly that it's not right to skip work for personal reasons. Young Jun sighs that it's confusing how she sometimes acts like his secretary and sometimes his girlfriend. He says that her previous way of supporting him, like pouring his water at lunch, makes him look like a bad guy now. Misa says it's her job to look after his comfort, so Young Jun asks her only to support to him on work-related issues, and he'll take care of his own personal needs. He says he may be a selfish boss, but he doesn't want to be a selfish boyfriend. That squishy sound you hear is my heart melting. Yushik's regular driver is out, so Murray Yuem drives him to a meeting while he reviews the paperwork. He's in a good mood until he sees a man and woman crossing the street in front of his car, and Murray Yuem recognizes the woman as his ex-wife. Or, the next time Young Jun leaves his office, Miso asks if he needs anything, and he says he needs her to be indifferent and lazy. He goes down to the 